Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome to church this morning. Welcome, church. Thank you all for coming. My name is Sam Parrish. I'm uh, one of the elders here at, at Magnolia Cowboy Church. I just want to welcome you and thank you uh, for tuning in today. Um, I wanted to give you a quick reminder. I've got some announcements for you. I've got a, a quick reminder. Next Sunday, we will resume uh, regular church services, three here at the church. So uh, check off for all the times and all that. They'll, we're going to go back to regular church service. A detailed list of this week's annou- announcements can be found on our Facebook page after this service. Uh, so check that out. Uh, after the service, uh, all these announcements will be up there and posted. Ways to connect if you are joining us from home. Uh, we want to connect with you. We've got a way to connect through private message. Uh, you can private message us here. Uh, we can, you can comment in the comment section, uh, or you can call one of the phone numbers there uh, listed on the screen. VBS. We've got VBS coming up of all ages up to completed sixth grade. Uh, because we care about ministering to kids and their families, as well as everyone's safety, uh, we have decided to modify uh, modify VBS uh, and our hosting drive-in, drive-in VBS. That's Tuesday through Thursday, uh, July 28th through the 30th, uh, from 9 to 11 a.m. Parents or guardians must accompany uh, children at all times. Uh, all ages are welcome. Please register on Facebook so we can get a, a prep on supplies. But Buckle Bonanza Team Roping, we had our last roping canceled due to weather, and we've got one rescheduled, uh, that same roping. It is moved to Saturday, July 25th. We're giving away 10 buckles uh, to winners. See our, our Facebook flyer, our flyer on Facebook. Uh, you can get a look at those buckles as well as the, the, the dates and all that. Uh, and prayer requests, we want to pray for you. Uh, see our link on Facebook to submit prayer requests at any time. Tithes and offering. Ties and offering. Easiest way to give uh, is to text to give. Um, you simply text this phone number to 281 500 9802 uh, with an amount, and you will be prompted uh, to for your tithes and offering information. Ad- additional ways to give can be found on Facebook posts. All right, get me out of the way for the message. Let's pray. Father God, we just come to you this morning, God, just thanking you for. For today, Father, as we, we drove up, there was a little breeze coming up, Father. It's going to be a hot couple ones. So, Father, I pray for everyone working outside, God, and just just the whole church, Father. As, as we sit here this morning uh, getting ready for your message, Father, I pray that you just speak it loud and clear, God. God, there's something that you want each and every one of us to, to hear, Father, to feel, Father. And I, I pray that that gets spoken loud and clear directly to our hearts, God. We love you. We thank you. And it's in Jesus' name they all said, amen. Thank you. Good morning, church, friends. It's good to be here with you. It's a privilege to be able to worship with you while you're in your home. As we sing these songs, you know, I just kind of thought this morning. Not that we could ever be. full extent of these things that we sing about God, but, you know, as we sing about who He is, you know, as we sing about these uh, these qualities and, and characteristics of God, are we reflecting them? As we sing this next song, Come Thou Fount, are we representing the fount of every blessing? Because that's the goal, right? be more and more like our Father. As we worship God this morning, let's just ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, would you reveal to us how we can be transformed to look more like you, look more like our Jesus. Lord, we love you. Praise the 
the mountain fixed upon it. Mountains are redeeming love.
I could ever come close Nothing can compare You're our living hope You are present, Lord And I've tasted and seen Becomes free if my shame is under your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here.
No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. I'm here in your love, here in your love. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. I'm here in your love. I would rather be no place I would rather be no place I would rather be here in your love here in your love no place I would rather be no place I would rather be no place I would rather be here in your love here in your love Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, can't control. Well, I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, can't control. Well, I want more of you, God. I want more. I want more. One more, I want more, I want more, I want more, God. So pour it out. I want more, 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 God. So pour it out, yeah. I would rather be no place I would rather be no place I would rather be here in your love here in your love no place I would rather be no place no place I would rather be 
Jesus, this morning as we come before you, God, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for this opportunity to speak a word that you've given to me. I'm thankful that we live in a country that we got to celebrate another year. God, this morning I am asking for you to speak to hearts and minds all over the country and all over the world and wherever people are listening. That you, God, would be the focal point, that you would uh, open our hearts and our minds and just 
Use us for your glory, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Good morning, everybody. Welcome in. For those that don't know me, my name is Corey Johnson, and I'm the uh, men's ministry leader here at Magnolia Cowboy Church. Robert and Kim are taking a, a much-needed break at the coast, and they'll be back next Sunday. I'm, I'm a little nervous. Uh, I told Robert when he prayed with me this morning that normally this is just a recording, and if you screw it up, you just don't post it on YouTube. And here we are live, and it's, it's out there for the world to see. So before we get into the message this morning, I want to ask everyone at home to kind of get your elements ready. This is Communion Sunday. And we hold an open communion here at Magnolia Cowboy Church, which means that if you, believer, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, then we want to share this meal with you. But before we do this, I want to read a couple of things, and, and I want to talk about why we're doing this. In Matthew 18, 2 through 4, it says, it says uh, Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. My girls are 21 years old. I have twins. And they are self-sufficient-ish. And it's sometimes easy to forget how helpless and dependent they were on, on us when they were younger. You know, when they were babies, they just laid there. They ate, they slept, they made a mess in the diaper. But they just laid there. Their growth from babies to adults has, has reminded me that as, a, as an adult, as an adult from the world's perspective, I'm fairly self-sufficient-ish. I had a job that allowed me to earn the money I needed to buy what I wanted, definitely what I needed. But the reality is God is my provider. Jesus is the reason I'm acceptable to God. That's Colossians 1.22. I'm not worthy of God. I'm not really self-sufficient without him. I was just going to work around it. Thank you, man. I'm dependent on God for everything, just as my daughters were dependent on my wife and I when they were babies. So as an adult, I can forget the reasons why we take communion. I can forget the what's, and the wares, and not give it the proper respect and honor that it needs to have. I could have also not taught my children what it means to take communion. So I want to ask you to do two things as we take communion today. Number one, get yourself ready. Are you taking this with a right heart? Are you ready to lay your sacrifice on the altar? Or do you need to put it down and go make something right with someone who's maybe has something against you. Are you taking this meal in a worthy manner? And number two, teach your children what it really means to honor the communion. To honor Christ with this communion. You know that Jesus is eagerly waiting to have this meal with them. God, as we move into this communion with you. Lord, I pray for each one of the folks that are out there today that they're prepared. They're ready to take communion. They're ready to, to share a meal with you. In your name I pray. Amen. In 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three 23 and 24, on the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You can take the bread now. I forgot to get a cup. It's all right. It's all right. 
Thank you. There's that screwing it up thing. So we're going to take the bread. Paul continues in verse 25, and he says, In the same way he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this, and remember to me as often as you drink it. You take the juice now. He ends this with a celebratory word and a warning. Start in verse 26, we celebrate. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. That's a celebration. And then, of course, we get the warning. So anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. This is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. This is why we teach our kids about communion. And this is why we make sure we're ready to take it. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood shed for us. Thank you that you have given us this way to celebrate and have a meal with you. Amen. So for the last two weeks, Robert has been preaching out of Luke 15, 11 through 32, which is the story of what we now know to be the lost sons. That this story is really about the father. And, if, you know, if you've missed either one of these, I really encourage you to go back and listen to them. It's so good. Last Sunday, God gave me a word about what I was supposed to speak about when I fill in today. And what God gave me was out of those same verses, and he immediately gave me a picture of what it looks like. I'm going to shock you a little bit. This is a cowboy church, and I like westerns. What immediately popped into my mind when I read today's verse, and I read this last Sunday, was a scene from a movie that was actually a remake of an older movie called Monty Walsh. I'm going to highly recommend you watch it because both of them are excellent. <clears throat> At the end of this movie, there's a scene where these two old cowboys are sitting on a porch. And they're kind of watching the town go around them. Watching the world go by, really. And the older of these two cowboys, he kind of squints off in the distance and, and he says, Rider coming. They didn't speak a lot. The younger of these two cowboys, he kind of squints his eyes and says, Yep, that's Monty Walsh. And the first one replies, Well, how do you know? And the second one says, Nobody sits a horse like Monty Walsh. Well, you may be asking yourself how we can apply this to the verses that we're going to read today. And I'm going to walk you through it. But first I want to read Luke 15, 11 through 32 again. And then he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of the goods that falls to me. So he divided them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent it all, there arose a severe famine in the land. And he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and, sent to him, and he sent him to his fields to feed the swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, but no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. And he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. 
And the son just said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this is my son. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now the older son was in the field and he came and drew near to the house. He heard music and dancing. So he called one of his servants and asked him what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore, his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I have never transgressed your commandment at any time, and yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed a fatted calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make Mary and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. So last week we heard how this younger son came to himself. What a, what a great idea. To have some self-realization about who we are. I would ask, how much of yourself did you see in the two sons? Did you find yourself living in a prodigal life in some areas of your life? Or were you convicted about all of your life? Or were you feeling like the older son where you felt like you gave all to the father and you deserved something for your obedience? To be honest, I can see myself... In both sons. I have lived a prodigal life. And at times it can and will raise its head up. And I guess I want us to remember that the prodigal is. The definition of prodigal is. Extravagant. Ex- spending money extravagantly. Uh, uh, wastefully extravagant. Man. Oh man, I can see myself in this. Even now, more than I care to admit. I also see myself as the other son at times. I look at the father and I say, why is this stuff happening? I have been faithful and obedient to you. But have I really? Why am I serving the father? And I say all this to say that at times I have an identity crisis. I forget where I stand and I I get out of step with the Lord. I learned all of that last week, but the verse that caught my attention was verse 20. It says, He arose and came to the Father, but when he was still a great way off, the Father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. It says, while he was still a great way off. So as we kind of get into this idea that the Father sees us while we're still a long way off, I have three questions for you. One, who does God recognize? Last week, Robert talked about the fruits of the flesh in Galatians 5, 19 through 21. It says, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, and idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I have told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Our world today tells tells us that all these things can be explained or justified away. In fact, our world tells us that these are the things that we should be seeking. That if it feels good, just do it. 
I believe that these and similar acts have led us to where we are in the world today. Nothing that we read here respects authority, respects self, or respects God. If we look at where the world is today, it would seem that we are so very far away from God. So very far away from where God would want us to be. But God said in Genesis 1.26, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Then again in John 1, 1 through 5, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it. We are made in the image of God, and He will recognize us because we're His creation. We can move far, far away from God with prodigal living and try to get as far from Him as we possibly can, but we can't change facts. God recognizes His creation. Jeremiah 1 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. So the answer to our first question is this. God recognizes his creation. I want you to think about that younger son for a minute. At no point in all of his prodigal living did he become anything different. He was still his father's son. When we're living in our sin, we are still the Father's creation. And question number two, why does God recognize us? When I wrote that down, my first thought was, what a terrible question. If you look at his creation today, we're aborting babies at an astronomical number. Since 1973, there have been 61.8 million legal abortions. And to give you an idea of this scope, this is the same amount of the population of the top 80 cities of the United States. That would be like us going to the the top 80 highest population cities in the United States and just killing everybody. That's a huge amount. We fight over the color of our skin. Pornography and abuse are on the rise. We're a people that care more about self and our own personal drama than we care about the the pain of others. We care about what we wear, what we drive, what we look like on social media. And the list could go on and on and on. Maybe, Maybe the question should have been, Why would God want to recognize us? We as a people are a long way off from God and have put on so many disguises trying to hide from God and we think we've been successful. And I'm talking to me on a lot of this because I'm right there with y'all. But I believe that we serve a God of hope. Romans 5, 5 says, And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. That He gave us this thing called free will because He wants us to choose to worship Him. He recognizes us because of His great love for us. Romans 5, 8, But God shows His love for us that it, while we were still sinners... Christ died for us. Because I believe that we serve a God of hope. I believe that when we come to ourselves, kind of like this wild son did, and turn back toward Christ, the Father runs towards us and greets us with a kiss and great joy. We have no further to look than the last book in the Bible. Revelations 5, 9. You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed it us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth 
Jesus' devotion is felt in his creating and sustaining life for the world. The answer to the question, why does God love us? The Father's love has waited and waited and never forgot. It was a love that fully received us not putting the Son on probation. God loves us because God loves us because God loves us. And question three is, does God recognize you? This last question is a little more personal. And it's for you to answer in your relationship with God. You know, some, sometimes we come to church and we buy fire insurance because we want to make sure we don't go to hell. Or if you like me, I came because I wanted to spend time with my wife. I thought God was supposed to leave at noon and I wasn't far behind him at the door. I think we could all use a heart check at different times in our lives. You know, Adam walked in the cool of the evening with God in the garden. His relationship with God was so close, they were side by side. They were not separated. And then that first sin occurred and occurred, and now that there's this, this separation from God because we're not what God made us to be. And that gulf, that distance is so great that there isn't any way back. But God showed how much he recognized you by doing the most personal thing that he could do. He gave us his son to cover that gulf, to shed blood for our sins. John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's pretty personal. That's pretty personal. So in serving God, do we just check boxes? I came to church, check. I served in the men's ministry, check. I brought a message, check. Or will we approach this as men and women who devote ourselves to Jesus? We should find strength in selflessness. We should be quick to do what's right, to have a steel backbone against evil and never run from God's purpose in our lives. That's what I want for me. That's what I want for you. I want the Father to say, that's Corey Johnson. Nobody sits a horse like Corey Johnson. To be recognized while I'm still a long way off, but even more important, to be moving toward God. You know, today you have that chance. Today I hope that you understand that God recognizes you because you are his creation. That he loves his creation despite how we act. But most importantly, that he loves us, each one of us, so personally and intimately that he chose to close that distance between us with the shed blood of his son. Are you going to run to the Father today? He still sees us. He still recognizes us, even when we're a long ways off. In the Zach Williams song, There Was Jesus, it says, in the waiting, in the searching, in the healing, in the hurting, there was Jesus. If you don't know Christ, I want to encourage you to submit yourself to him today. Accept that grace and forgiveness that covers all of our sins and draws us into this relationship with God that we want and crave. Lord Jesus, this morning as we come before you, I pray for everybody listening, folks here at the building, 
but I pray for your church. That you, God, would be the one that uh, pierces their hearts. That you see them from a long way off. That you want to say, well done, good and faithful son. That we would be pure starting today. That God, your presence is so strong in each one of the people listening. That you have spoken to their hearts and minds. That they know that they can just say the simple words, I believe Jesus. Forgive me where I failed you, Lord. I want a relationship with you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for listening. Good evening.